Hi, how are you? My name is Angel. Today's video is highly requested. Um, I can't tell you how many times a day that I get requests to do my entire fragrance collection. And I've decided to try and indulge you guys once again. You might know that I have tried and failed to get this video up several times in the past. I film it and then I can't edit it down because it gets too long. I, I really, 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 really am around. I can really, I can go on. Like I can listen, there's no stopping me once I start talking about fragrance. So each time I film it, it just gets too long. I've decided this time to break it down into three parts um, of 30, 30, 30 each. In the beginning I was thinking that I would have to talk about more than a hundred fragrances because I have more than a hundred bottles but I wasn't accounting for I wasn't using my head. I wasn't accounting for the fact that a lot of my bottles are not a lot but a good number are duplicates. So I have several bottles of Chanel 5, several bottles of Black Orchid Tom Ford, several bottles you know I have there's there's a, there's a few that I have duplicates of um, so I'm just not going to talk about, I don't know why, I always thought we were going to have to talk about more than a hundred and I kept thinking, like it was always so daunting to think about. Sometimes I just don't use my head. Why? Why? Anyway, I do think that um, three videos of about 30 each should be manageable um, and should be less daunting for me to edit down to a respectable length. Um, I'm going to challenge myself to talk about each fragrance for less than a minute. Uh, let's see how this goes. Right? I mean, I can't promise anything because I, I get a bit excitable, so we shall see. This video has a lot of French French designers and some Tom Ford. Actually, it's all French designers and Tom Ford. Well, what are we going to call a liar? North Africa? I mean, we'll get to it. Let's do Chanel first because we have to do Chanel first. That's just the kind of woman I am. Chanel first. Um, I do have a, a dedicated Chanel video if you are interested in my Chanel collection. I think at the time I had all of these except for one. Yeah. All right. We'll begin with the iconic Chanel 5 Eau de Toilette. This was uh, my signature for a long time. I, I consider this my signature from about 2012 to 2018. Um, and then I, my current signature is something that I'll show you in this video as well. Chanel 5 Eau de Toilette is a soapy, clean, uh, warm skin kind of fragrance for me. I always say that it smells like a woman. Um, who has just showered with Imperial Leather Bar Soap. It smells like woman and soap, like warm skin and soap. It's just, it's beautiful, it's very effortless. Hold on, let's have one because I've missed her. Very effortless, very clean, very poised without really putting much thought into it. It's the kind of woman who doesn't really have to try hard to be elegant. You agree with her, let's go um, to X place and it's casual. And when she shows up, she is casual, but she's real elegant. It's like, Barbara, I thought we were gonna be looking chill. Why do you look like that? You look, why, 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 why? That girl, Chanel 5. Very effortless elegance, I would say. I have also got the Chanel 5 Eau de Parfum, which I would say is a little bit more formal and intense than the Eau de, Eau de Toilette. Um, it's thicker, it's more old fashioned. It's not, um, this, this I think can be almost fresh, worn the right way. Um, whereas this is invariably heavy. I wear it for more formal things. Um, in, the in the recent past, I've only worn it to funerals. So it's, it's quite a morose, somber take on the same scent. I mean, they are sister fragrances. They smell very alike, but this is a lot more formal, I would say. You need, you need to be wearing like a coat and you need, you, you need to be quite... Um, it's more formal. Let's say that. It's, it's, um, if you watched um, Gilmore Girls, uh, Lorelai's mom, for sure, the character smells like Chanel 5 or de Parfum, for sure, for sure. And then uh, I would say Rory is an eau de toilette, and then Lorelai herself is probably an eau premier. This is Chanel 5 eau premier, which I have in the enormous 100 mil. Oh, I wore this obsessively in like 2016, 2017. I loved this version of number five. It is a much more modern, youthful, exuberant, effervescent version. It kind of feels like Ch Ch Chanel number no. five went out and had a glass of champagne. So she's looser, she's more relaxed, she let her hair down. She's she's not, she doesn't really have as huge a stick up her butt, okay? She's, <laughs> she's chilling. <a> little bit. <laughs> yeah, she's a lot more relaxed than the other two, a, a little bit more airy, doesn't have as much of an aldehydic base. Um, and thus it's much more modern. If you've struggled with the classics and you, you would like to have some version of number five in your closet, I would recommend trying Eau Premier. It's a lot more modern um, and sheds a lot of the more difficult aspects of number five. And then this, is, oh, see, this is what I mean. This is the, my, my, um, 
my backup bottle of the premiere so this shouldn't be here this shouldn't be part of the 30 but it's a backup bottle of the premiere it's the same the same perfume i just have um uh, another an extra bottle because that's the kind of woman that i am I, I i i panic about reformulations and stuff so that's a good way to get me to buy more of your fragrance just tell me that you're going to reformulate and i'll panic buy like two extra bottles Okay, let's go into the Coco line. Um, this is Chanel Coco, the original. Some people think the Coco Mademoiselle is the original. No, the original is Coco with the black label. That's her. This is a very 80s fragrance. It was made 80, I think 84, and it's very 80s. It, I just, it didn't really, it didn't age well because it just, it screams 80s. It screams shoulder pads and bright pink lipstick and, and a perm. It, it's very 80s. <laughs> um, it's a spicy, smoky um powdery rose uh in that very 80s way uh, a lot of fragrances in the 80s had had a kind of intensity that's not necessarily good performance it's just intense in your faceness this has the same that quality in the in the spiciness the rose is timeless but certainly the the spiciness is very um i like it for dates if I'm going on a date with an older man, I've never been complimented on this fragrance by anyone other than an older man. Um, like, I don't think anyone under like 35 has ever complimented me on this fragrance. I've never been complimented by women on this fragrance. I've never been complimented by friends on this fragrance, but I've been on a couple dates with, I mean, I tend to date older um, and they like it. I assume because for them it's familiar uh, or this kind of, this type of fragrance is familiar, but um, a lot of people don't like it. I mean, I appreciate it because I, I I can, I really get the rose out of it. And usually when I wear it, I will tend to layer it with um, with a solid floor rose, like Stella by Stella McCartney to play up the rose in it. But it's not one I would say that you need to run out and get. It kind of smells like Chanel 5 plus lots of spices like cloves and cumin, plus kind of an incense something plus rose um the chanel dna is, def is definitely there it's just very 80s and intense yeah uh yeah it, it it's it's a very self-assured fragrance she doesn't really need validation from anybody she does her own thing um the only other woman i've known that wears this fragrance regularly is a very she's a very confident woman and she's very she's odd like she's an interestingly confident like she's She's older, she's much older, she must be almost 60 by now. Um, and she looks like a black Carmen de la Riviche. And she's, she's just so self-assured and interesting and worldly. And it's that, it needs that kind of a woman, you know? It's not what you need to run out and get yesterday, you know? There's one I can't find that should be here. My Chanel Coco Mademoiselle in Pepin. I don't know where that is. It might be at my parents' house because I know it's not in my cabinet. Where is my... Anyway, that's somewhere. But I do have with me Chanel, Coco Mademoiselle, and Parfum Entente. I mean, I've sp spoken about this fragrance ad nauseum, ad infinitum on this channel. Ah, this is my current signature fragrance. I wear this more than anything else. Um, though, at the moment, I am giving it a break because I was wearing so much of it that I started to not smell it. Um, <laughs> we're in a very steamy love affair, so I, I we had to take a break because... She was getting in the way of me and real life. Like I, I couldn't, I couldn't smell it because I was wearing it so much. I got like an osmic to it. Where? So we're taking a little break. And that's not because I don't love you, baby. It's just because we don't, we don't need to get addicted to each other. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, yeah, that's my current favorite. Um, it's a beautiful, sexy patchouli rose. Um, a bit of citrus in it. You get quite a bit of citrus in the top. And then that fades out to a beautiful patchouli tonka rose beautifulness it's a very bombshell kind of fragrance very everyday bombshell though it's not an intense um unwearable bombshell it's a very very versatile bombshell fragrance i like happily wear it to brunch lunch dinner dates meetings plane rides like i'm, I'm wearing this everywhere oh gosh do you remember plane rides oh coronavirus coronavirus <laughs> But yeah, this is very, very, very versatile for a sexy bombshell uh, Jessica Rabbit everyday kind of woman. Ah, ah, 
love 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 that fragrance and finally from the coco line i've got coco noir which is meant to be a darker version of Coco Mademoiselle, I don't know. I mean, I feel like honestly, it's a lighter version of the original Coco. It's not spicy. They took out all of that 80s spice. They kept the smokiness. It's an incense, a frankincense, um, no, that's like frankincense in a Catholic church kind of smokiness. Um, rose. Uh, it's a soft, it's a, it's a kind of softer, smoky, sexy rose without being scandalous um more more well behaved i think this is a very good signature if you're more of a gothic girl more of a all black dark eyeliner kind of cool eyeliner kind of girl it's yeah it's almost like if chanel went the middle eastern route like with the you know how everyone is trying to do some kind of middle eastern take on fragrances chanel never will they're not they're really not gonna do a properly oud fragrance but this is probably as, as close as chanel's gonna go it's a very polished dark fragrance i really love that fragrance actually uh what else have we got from chanel okay here's number 19 uh i have it in the eau de parfum i used to have the eau de toilette but we just we didn't we didn't last long it's a, it's a little bit a little bit too crisp and angular and sharp for me this is just as angular and sharp but it's softened and um, made sexy by a bit of a leather note it's a very crisp clean green fragrance like freshly cut roses and that's the entire rose so the rosebud and the stem and the thorns the entire rose um so it's not it's not just like a floral it's a, it's floral and green and then there's a beautiful leather note it's like um but it's a soft leather note like suede gloves not like a not like a whip it's not like a, a horse saddle or anything the leather note is very soft and elegant like gloves um this smells like a sexy but strict librarian or you know how like Young, young, younger, younger men will have a crush on like their sexy, mean lecturer. It's kind of that woman, um, the kind of bitch that men love. That kind of woman, like she's not nice, she's not sweet, but that's kind of the sexiest thing about her. That kind of woman. And then this is Chanel number nineteen Poudre, which uh, Poudre is French for powder, and this is a softer. Oh, it's a softer Chanel uh, nineteen. It's pretty much. Oh. Pretty much the same, you get the floor. Oh my god, I haven't worn this in too long. It's pretty much the same, you get the, the, the floral, the rose, um, the, 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 the green, clean, crisp rose, but this is softer, you get a bit of powder in it. So I would say it's kind of like, after when that woman goes home to her kids, the woman that she is with her kids, she's still the same woman, she's strict, she's austere, she likes rules, but she's, of course, somehow softer. She gives hugs. You know, whereas this woman probably just shakes your hand and then sanitizes. You know? <laughs> oh gosh, we have a lot of Chanel. And then I've got Chanel Chance, uh, and I have it in the Eau de Parfum. This is the very first Chanel fragrance I ever owned. It was gifted to me uh, in high school by a boy that I was dating. I was 15, turning 16, and he cheated on me. And cheating is like in the way that high schoolers cheat, like he just started texting some other girl and i was really upset and hurt um and he went on vacation with his parents in europe and he bought me chanel chance and i forgave him because i'm stupid that's all it takes like if you've messed up show up with chanel and i'll, I'll reconsider <laughs> stupid just stupid um, I feel like I've kind of outgrown this fragrance. I've bought quite a few bottles of it in my life. I mean, my first one was 16 and this is probably my third one. And I don't think I'm gonna replace this once I run out. I just think I've outgrown it. It now reminds me of high school. When I smell it, it reminds me of high school and the first couple years of uni. That's probably when I wore it the most. Um, it's a fun, um, patchouli, pineapple, orange kind of fragrance. It's quite fruity, but in a very Chanel way. Um, it's not sporty or like cute or anything. I do think that the flankers are a lot more sporty than the original. I would never touch any of them with a with a stick. I just find them really unremarkable. Like you could probably get the same scent out of body spray or even shampoo to be honest. Like Ofesh smells like body spray to me. Autant smells like shampoo to me. Ovive smells like juice. Like Minute Maid, um, pink grapefruit. That's what Ovi smells like to me. Like I, I'm just like, why, 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 why would I spend the money on this? Um, this is slightly more complex because you get a bit more of that Chanel patchouli. Um, but I, I've outgrown this one, so I'm probably not going to be replacing that. Let me run and get my other 
Chanel for that one. And finally for Chanel, I have Allure in the Parfum. This is pure perfume. Um, it comes in really tiny bottles. In here is a, it sits in this gorgeous little packaging. Um, it's just seven and a half mil, teeny tiny, comes like that. Um, this is the only version of Allure that I can tolerate. I think the rest of them just did not age well at all. Um, they smell, the smell is very 90s to me. <laughs> Very very 90s. I yeah Yeah, I'm not a big fan. This one. I think is a little bit more timeless. It's it's a It's a peachy patchouli and peach I think is a signature 90s fragrance like peach got a lot of hype in the 90s So a lot of the time when when a fragrance is peach heavy it does tend to be a bit dated like It's warm and kind of boozy it has has a bit of a boozy feel like peach and um, Malibu kind of not that it has a coconut note but it has like a, a boozy boozy like 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 a liqueur kind of feel I don't really wear it very often when I first got it I did wear it quite a bit because um, the gentleman that I was engaged to at the time loved it on me uh, but I don't really wear it much anymore because I, I just it's just it's so 90s it's so 90s that you know I'm not really a big fan that's it for Chanel. What are we gonna do next? Let's quickly do Guerlain. Um, I need to do it faster because I can see that I've just, I've really gone on with Chanel. But it's Chanel, you you live. This is Guerlain, Mon Guerlain. no, you know what, that's wrong. I'm gonna talk about Guerlain. We have to start with Chalimar, the classic. Um, this is the only fragrance probably that is almost as old as Chanel 5 in my collection. Chanel 5 is a 1921 release. It first came out in 1921 and Chanel came out in 1925. So these are OGs. If you like sweet fragrances at all, um, you owe them to the creators of Chanel. Um, before Chanel, there hadn't really been a fragrance that smelled of food in any way. Fragrances were mostly based on flowers and then Chanel, came, um, Chanel 5 came out under the instructions from Madame to make a fragrance that smelled like a woman and not like a flower. So this was very avant-garde when it came out. And then this is a lot more oriental than anything that had been seen before this. Okay, it's very, this is the Eau de Parfum. Hmm. It's a leather, citrus, vanilla fragrance um, in reverse order. So you get a lot of vanilla, quite a bit of citrus, and then leather plays a background note. It's very sexy, very sensual. There's a there's quite a bit of powder in this Eau de Parfum, the classic Eau de Parfum, uh, which does make it smell like a 20s fragrance, to be honest. Like it is a little bit old fashioned in a very wearable way. I like it to play dress up. Like if I'm gonna put on like a pencil skirt and look like a lady out of the 20s, like if I'm gonna do like a, a little Marilyn thing, I will throw on some Chalamar for effect. Um, uh, do, do you have time for the story? It was um, named after uh, the Shalimar, the goddess of Shalimar, which exists in... Uh, it was inspired by the story of the Taj Mahal, um, that king who uh, had the Taj Mahal built for his wife who died in labor, whom he just loved so much and he spent the rest of his years wandering through the gardens outside the Taj Mahal, missing her and just devoted to her. So uh, it's a very it's a very romantic fragrance to me as well. Uh, <laughs> a more modern take on Chalamar is Chalamar Parfum Initial. This is certainly a lot more wearable, um, perhaps not as old fashioned as the classic, not as um, costumey. Uh, this doesn't have nearly as much powder as the original. This is a lot more, it's sweeter um, and there's a lot more, well there's more vanilla and there's more citrus uh, and the leather is nowhere to be found. I actually used to wear this to teach my Sunday schoolers and I thought um, that it was, I mean I thought it was great. They thought that I, I got the compliment more than once that I smelled like gingerbread cookies uh, from my kids. I taught the uh, three to five year olds. So I, I mean, it's a very wearable take on Chalamar, but it does strip it of a lot of the key components. Like Ch Chalamar without leather really isn't Chalamar to be honest, but there you are, I have that. And then I've got Mont Guerlain. Now we can talk about Mont Guerlain. Uh, this is a lavender, oh, gosh, okay. It's a lavender, oh, lavender vanilla fragrance. It's very French, very, very French, very elegant, very easy to wear. This is probably among 
my favorite fragrances for cooler weather i have been wearing it a lot in the past couple of weeks uh because it's been quite chilly in nairobi lately and this really lends itself to cold weather it's lavender and vanilla done beautifully it's not it's not a very shampooy lotiony lavender um it's just it's just a very beautifully balanced lavender vanilla fragrance i, I really love that one and finally i've got tonka imperial oh Tonka Imperial by Guerlain as well, uh, which comes in this very ostentatious, dramatic bottle. Oh, I didn't catch any. I mean, I don't need to, I know what this smells. Oh, okay, 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 ooh. This is among my sexiest. If you want a, a complete, just a full on rant about this fragrance, I will link my Seduce and Destroy video above. Uh, very, very sexy, deep, dark, wicked which up to no good kind of fragrance they're in, intensely sexy i think it's also um one that could be worn by a man uh, but i've never smelled it on a man i just think that it would work very well on a man especially a man that smokes because it does very well with smoke it has a bit of an intensity like a smoky um note in the uh in, in in the fragrance in the composition that i think lends itself very well to smoke so um if you're gonna be on a date with a man who smokes this is probably gonna smell very good next to the smoke sometimes some fragrances really clash with the smell of smoke and and and, and becomes unpleasant this works very well with smoke because it has a beautiful smoke um incense note underlying it oh that's gorgeous okay let's quickly do hermes here i've got who's calling me Hello. So here I've got Kelly Kalesh from MS. This is a beautiful uh, rose and leather fragrance. Uh, honestly, it comes off like a gin and tonic. If you had uh, like a rose flavored tonic uh, and you made a gin and tonic, that's what it smells like to me. The rose isn't uh, isn't necessarily very floral. It's kind of <laughs> it, weirdly, it's like a fruity rose. It's, it, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's not a super floral, classic, classic rose. Um, it's a very wearable outdoors kind of fragrance. I love this fragrance outdoors. Um, I, re I really like it for, especially for the polo. Mm. Really love that fragrance. I've got Van Faber by Mess as well. <laughs> this is by far my most elegant fragrance in my collection. It's a very, very, very polished very well put together, knows which fork to use, wears the correct outfit for the dress code, probably owns a fur, very elegant, like elegant to the point of stiffness kind of fragrance. Very intense white floral fragrance. Um, it smells like, like long money, old money, you know? I feel like Blair Waldorf from, um, from uh, what's that show? Gossip Girl, yeah, you know? Very, 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 very prim and proper. I really love that fragrance. It's very dramatically, dramatically elegant. Um, like a woman who smokes with a, you know, with a, you know, cigarette holder. And then it's like a long, like rich auntie vibes for sure. Next up, we've got Voyage Dermes. This is one of my favorite freshies in my entire collection. It's a very clean, green, white, like pale, pale, pale green, and super, super crisp white kind of fragrance it smells like wearing linen on a yacht it's very rich people in the french riviera kind of oh my god very 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 good for hot weather not even warm super intense hot weather yeah oh, oh my god i love this um i compare this a lot to white tea this um like white tea is the cheaper version of this i would say they're not exactly the same um this is certainly more complex uh, but they're very similar in their style fresh and clean and crisp kind of fragrances mm. enjoy that one a lot i've got twilly by Hermes. this i absolutely love i mean as you know mm -hmm. it's a very fun i mean it, it's it's like fun fun and elegant like you can tell you can tell it's a it smells expensive like it doesn't smell like cheap stuff but then it's also very like carefree. If you've seen the ad for this, the ad is spot on for this one. It's like colorful, vibrant, but still quite polished. Um, it's meant to be tuberose. They say the note is tuberose, but honestly, I, sm I smell gardenias um, and sandalwood and ginger. That ginger is what gives it that kind of fun kick. Ugh. 
I love it. It's a very enjoyable fragrance for me year round. I prefer it in hotter weather, uh, warmer, warm to hot weather, but honestly, I can get away with this year round. I love this fragrance and the bottle is really cute. And then I've got a teeny tiny bottle of Twilly Hermes um, Au Parfum. Teeny tiny, not even something to write home about. This one is uh, rosy. I mean, Poivre. Poivre is uh, French for pepper. So this is supposed to be the peppery version. But you need to note that the pepper in question is pink pepper. Pink pepper doesn't actually smell like pepper. Pink pepper actually smells like um, something between rose and peony. Um, so it's actually more of a floral note. Uh, I would say that this just smells like if you took out the the ginger or if you pared down the ginger and then added a bunch of rose to the original Twilly. Um, if you just wanted a rose version of Twilly, this is probably the, the, the closest that you're gonna get. I, of course, was like gagging over it immediately because ah, I love roses and I love Twilly, so put them together, I'm down, you know? Really, really love this fragrance as well. Very elegant, fun, relaxed, but still quite polished. It's like the, it's like going to a nice boutique hotel and wearing one of those big sun hats um, and then taking a picture on Instagram where all you have on is a hat. It's like, it's, it's indulgent wealth in a playful way, you know? Rather than, you know, this is more indulgent wealth in like a look how rich we are, darling, kind of way, you know? I don't know if you get what I mean. I mean, sometimes I'm just talking. Do you want to do Tom Ford next or Dior? Let's quickly do Dior because I only have three to show you. Don't I have more than three Dior fragrances? I might have forgotten a couple, but it's fine. You'll see them in other videos. I have Miss Dior and Parfum. I have Miss Dior Eau de Parfum and I have Miss Dior Le Parfum. Um, I prefer the Le Parfum by far, um, but I would say that this is quite beautiful. It's very similar to the current version of Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum. It's a patchouli, rose, citrus um, fragrance. Yeah, um, I think this is more elegant and better composed than the current version of of Coco Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum, uh, but this is the 2012 version. The new reformulation, because all Dior does is reformulate everything all the time, like, oh my god, the new version doesn't impress me, but the 2012 version I did like because it was similar to Coco Mademoiselle, but better. I prefer the Le Parfum because this is deeper, there's a lot more rose, oh, there's much more rose, and the quality of the rose is a lot more, it's a thicker, more velvety, deeper red rose. Oh, this is for sure more sexy, um, more intense, more grown up. Um, if anything, it would probably be the counterpart to Coq Mademoiselle Eau de Parfum Intense. But this is certainly, this is a different fragrance, but if you were to compare it, it's more similar to Eau de Parfum Intense than to Eau de Parfum um, in Coq Mademoiselle. This is discontinued though, it's very hard to find these days. And then Dior Addict, which I've talked about for so long, so many years, I've loved this fragrance and I still do. Among my favorite seduce and destroy fragrances, again, go see that video. Sexy, 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 unapologetic. Mm, mm, this gets stuff done if you're trying to get a title deed, baby. You're trying to marry well, baby. This is the, ooh, girl. Don't you play games with your addict. This is a weapon. This should not be legal, actually. This should be regulated. Gorgeous, a very sexy white floral and vanilla uh, fragrance without being too, not vanilla like cupcakes. It's like vanilla bean, like a raw vanilla bean. Oh, very refined. Let's quickly talk about the Tom Fords that I have in my collection. I, I got rid of quite a few since my Tom Ford video and I bought two more. So quickly, quickly, Tom Ford Black Orchid, a classic. Very many people love and have this one. Uh, it's everything but the kitchen sink, vanilla, florals, um, earthy truffle kind of note, um, smoky incense, like it, it's really, it's a very, very, very deep complex fragrance. Um, I've told you guys, I told the story of how I came upon this fragrance in my Tom Ford video, which I highly recommend that you watch. Um, and I still have it and I have three bottles of this one because I want to keep one for, if I have a daughter, um, I would like for her to experience this fragrance. I don't wear it as much as I used to, but I still think it's it's something one must experience. Um, it, it's very interesting, it's very odd, it's a very odd fragrance actually. Sexy as hell though. Sexy in a very risque way. I feel like it, 
can I just say it? It smells like men's cologne and women's perfume and sweat. So it smells like stuff has been happening. It, I, very, it's very scandalous actually. This is slightly less scandalous. It's a lot more wearable. Uh, a lot less problematic. <laughs> this is a sexy uh, oriental fragrance. It smells like kofi and smoky um, sweetness. Uh, it smells like ice cream and smoke, really. If you were to break it down to the most simplistic terms, but of course it's a lot more complex than that. One of my favorite sexy fragrances for um, dates, especially in the first the first few dates. It's a very memorable one. People tend to remember that one. Then I've got um, these two. They're the only ones in the round, like cylindrical packaging from Tom Ford. Uh, Metallic and Ombre Leather. Uh, Metallic is among the newer ones in my collection. I don't believe that we've talked about this before. Very aldehydic. Aldehydic to the point of smelling like bleach. Very aldehydic vanilla. It really just smells like bleach and vanilla. I love the smell of bleach. <laughs> So this is a very enjoyable scent to me. It's a very clean, clean vanilla. I really, really love this one. <laughs> I feel like for some people, this, if I say bleach, it's very off-putting, but definitely it smells like bleach and vanilla. I really, really love this one. It's one of very few simplistic vanilla fragrances that I actually enjoy. Typically, I like my vanilla to be a lot more complex than that, but that's gorgeous. And then Ombre Leather is a very, very super sexy leather fragrance. Oh, honestly quite masculine. Um, I tend to layer this a lot. It's perhaps a little bit too masculine sometimes and I'm someone who wears men's fragrances with no problem but this this is almost the point of smelling like an actual man. It smells like a man in a sexy sports car. Yeah, it just, oh my God. You know, it's in a sports car with leather seats and then you have a sexy man. The smell of a man's neck. When, when they've just showered in a sexy sports car. That's what this smells like. It layers very well, surprisingly, given how complex it is. It's amazing how well this layers. It plays very well with others. The other day I wore Chanel 19, this one, the original 19 with this. Oh, I smelled so good, like I was, oh. Mm, so good. And then from the Private Blends line, I have these three. I've got Tom Ford's Oud Wood, which is made for men but again i don't really believe in that very sexy clean um clean sophisticated woody fragrance um i think it's supposed to smell like bougie aftershave it's the vibes that i get but it, on me i feel like it just smells like it smells like good grooming <laughs> mm, it smells expensive and like good grooming it's, it, it, it does have a clean woody Court, um, and, and I think it's very versatile. I've smelled this on several men and I, I do love this on a man as well. I love this on a man. It's a very good workplace option for a man. Um, it needs a man in a suit. And then I've got, what's this? Tobacco by Knee by Tom Ford. I mean, the name gives it away. I mean, it smells like tobacco and vanilla, but like a cigar. It smells like, a, like, a, like an unsmoked cigar. Before you smoke a cigar, before you light a cigar, it smells like that kind of tobacco and the usual Tom Ford vanilla. Mm. I really enjoy this one, especially for late night things. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna end up on a late night date. Um, one time I ended up on a date, like a dessert date. So he called me, I had already eaten, he had already eaten, but he wanted to see me. So we went out for dessert and this is like at 10, 30, 10, 45. It, this was perfect for that, so. Those are the vibes. It's a very sexy fragrance. Again, another one I really enjoy on a man. I smelled it on two men only um, in the time that I've known of it. And one was on a plane. This guy sat, sat next to me on a plane and the whole time I was just like, oh my God, hold me back, Lord. I don't want to jump on this man. Like, I just do something for me, Jesus. Self-control, please, the fruits of the spirits. Oh, <laughs> very, very sexy on a man. And then I've got Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. Uh, by far my favorite my favorite Tom Ford fragrance. Oh my God, it's so romantic. Like I, I don't like to even call this sexy, which it is, but it's sexy in a very romantic way. I've said before, it smells like roses, red wine and chocolate. So it just smells like a Valentine's Day date, but in a very dangerous way. Um, it smells like the relationship between Bella and Edward in Twilight. Like, 
romantic in a very dangerous way like you might this this relationship you might you might end up dead you know but you love him but you might die okay he like he might be ted bundy okay that kind of relationship <laughs> romantic but dangerous and finally I, I thought that i would throw in an alaya fragrance in here to just round out the 30. this is azadine alaya alaya paris the original in the black bottle uh violets and hot stones it smells like violets and uh, uh stone like north africa you know how the, the, the buildings in North Africa, the, the older buildings are made of that, that North African stone? Or like sauna, the stones in a sauna? Yeah. Hot stone is what it smells like. Hot stone and then you wet it a little bit. The, the way the steam from a hot stone would smell, that and violets. It's a very interesting, um, subtly sexy fragrance it's like the equivalent of like coal eyeliner you know when uh, women that wear hijab is it just me or women who wear hijab tend to have beautiful makeup anyway a woman that's wearing um what's it called is it called burqa i don't want to say the wrong word but i think it's called burqa um when you only have the eyes um left out but then they have beautiful sexy eye makeup it's like that it's like I'm not really showing anything. There's no reason why you should think I'm sexy, but <laughs> don't you think I'm sexy? Like that. Very subtly sexy. Um, I think this is very good for an office setup. Um, yeah, that's it for this 30. How did we do? Mm, okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, the next installment will be up in the next few days. Thank you for watching. I hope that you're enjoying these. <laughs> Even if you're not, I'm going to do them anyway because I like to talk about fragrance. <laughs> God bless you. Love you. Mean it. Bye.